For the next year, I'm living on just $1 in 12 different countries around the world, from the only world's cheapest country to most expensive country, to see what $1 could still get you in 2024. Starting with the most expensive country of Monaco. And just looking through the streets here, you can honestly tell with supercars just zooming past you. And then a literal full-on port of yachts. I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> I'm a bit intimidated only having $1 here. But luckily, since Monaco borders France, there's a huge bakery culture here. So since there's a lot of demand, the prices are super low. I think we found the only thing in Monaco that costs under a dollar. Which, I mean, I know it's just bread, but honestly, fresh bread for under a dollar is something that you can't find in most countries. Especially for the most expensive country in the world. But you see, with each country that we go to, the experience and offering that we can buy for one dollar will get cooler and more epic all the way to the world's cheapest country. So, for example, for the next country of Singapore, even though this is one of the most expensive countries in the world, luckily, there's a huge street food culture here. With having hundreds of street food markets spread all across the country and I mean the prices here are absolutely incredible as each stall only serves like one or two items meaning they specialize in every dish they serve but I think I see a place that not only is cheap but serves a local Singaporean dish. Hi, you know one? Can I have the brown bihun? Bihun? Yeah. Okay, this one uh, without yeah. chili? Ah, uh, whoa. No one. No one do, chili. Do you think chili? Chili cool. Uh, okay, why not? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Holy crap is this a lot of food. Ladies and gentlemen, in front of us we have the famous bihun noodles, which are fried rice noodles that are made with different types of sauces. And then on the side, if you're brave, you have chili sauce and with a taste that can only be described as special as this place has been making the same dish for over 20 years like normally when you think of a dish that costs only 90 cents you don't think of excellent and ladies and gentlemen let me tell you we are just getting started over next here in hong kong we're back to the reality of the most expensive countries in the world where food <laughs> costs a lot of money. Like, for example, all of the street food behind me here comes about four times the price of what Singapore was. Like, I want to eat everything, but it's just too expensive. However, luckily, Hong Kong has a hat. Oh my gosh, and would you just take a look at this place. Smoke is just like pouring out of everywhere because they have these massive containers of different things here. Of anything from dumplings to different types of bows to fried things. And seeing that the menu is entirely in Chinese, can I, um ask you for a recommendation. This is my first time eating here, so. Oh, <laughs> I, I have you to order. Okay, thank you so much. And I gotta tell you guys, this thing looks freaking unbelievable. Being absolutely enormous in size here. And here's the best part. He left before I even asked what he ordered me, so this could be just about anything. The only thing I have to say is when in doubt, always, and I mean always, ask a local what to eat. But what if I told you you could eat food that's considered luxurious in literally every other country for cheap? You see, in Japan, since sushi is a local food, you can find crazy deals, and also coupled with one of the most unique ways of eating, where everything from the check-in, to seating, to ordering, is all automated. You see, you get this iPad here, and you can look through just whatever you want, with prices starting at just 100 yen. Like, we have lean tuna, special soy marinade, Native tuna, fatty albacore, salmon for 100 yen, shrimp, specialized fish like yellowtail. I mean, the list just goes on and on. Where after sending in the order, the chef makes the sushi and then puts it on the conveyor belt and sends it down to you. Ah, there's our food. Oh my god. Like, I know I'm in Japan, but this plate of sushi, this is beautiful. <laughs> like, I mean, just look at the size of those things. If I lived here in Japan, I would legit eat this every day. Like, come on, 75 cents for this? And on top of that, unlimited green tea. Like, come on, this is unbelievable. This is getting just like out of control good. But next here in South Korea, we're at one of their famous street food markets, which definitely is the most packed street food market we've been to yet. And even though these vendors have relatively small areas to cook, they make everything super fresh and from scratch. Do you have a favorite one? Oh. Most of Korean people like hot chili. I'll, uh, I'll take the one that Koreans like then. I, I gotta try that one. <laughs> Thank you so much. For... Oh, me. 
Oh, soup is free. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Holy crap. So, ladies and gentlemen, when you just take a look at what we got here, looking like a food that I've never seen before. You see, Korea has possibly the most innovative street food culture of any country. As it takes foods that are in their culture, but then takes it to an entirely new level. Like in front of us, we have a typical fish cake, but then inside the fish cake is a sausage. And then with on top, you have ketchup, mustard, and barbecue sauce, making, I guess you would say, like a Korean hot dog. And then coming with it is free soup. Honestly, freaking insane for a dollar. In short, Korea, you're amazing. Which innovative food can be cool, but next we've gone from Asia back to Europe to a very rainy Italy where you can buy homemade traditional food for cheap, which that homemade food is of course, pizza. Where here they don't sell slices, but buy the kilo. As first they make this massive sheet of pizza and then the customer tells them the amount they want cutting a very unique slice of pizza. You're not one, not two, yeah, not yeah, three, yeah, yeah. but four slices here. <laughs> Honestly looks like a quarter of the freaking pizza. Oh my god. Honestly, with prices going up all around the world, one dollar for this, this might be the best deal in the world. Next, I want to show you a side of Dubai that most people don't know. You see, although Dubai is home to the largest buildings and super luxurious things to do, it's also home to some of the world's best street food that's not only delicious, but cheap. Uh, it's a lot of it's what is it, no? Uh, spicy, yeah. yeah. Okay, I've seen your content. Cool. So ladies and gentlemen, in front of us we have the beautiful, the stunning falafel sandwich. Which of course the falafel is made typically, but the sandwich itself is a bit of a twist. You see, on the sandwich are not only vegetables, but a green sauce. Which all together supposedly combine to make a delicious taste. It's amazing falafel, yeah. <laughs> When the locals say it's good, you know it's a good flop. However, here in Madrid, Spain, it feels like this challenge was made for this country. As within the Spanish culture, one of the most popular ways of eating is the tapas way. And there's one restaurant that offers these tapas for just one dollar. You see here at 100 Montaditos, they have the largest dollar menu I've ever seen. With having truly a ridiculous range of selection here. From Spanish ham sandwiches, to Spanish sausage, to burgers, to egg sandwiches, to many, and I mean many more Spanish specials. Most days there's a one euro menu and then a two euro menu. But here's the thing, on Wednesdays and Sundays, everything on the menu is one euro. So seeing that it's Wednesday, I think I'm gonna have to go with one of the more expensive items. And oh my gosh, would you just take a look at this beautiful, and I mean stunning, sandwich with having a base of pulled pork then topped with spanish cheese and then fresh cut bacon like that is a packed sandwich man like i have no clue how these ingredients can cost just one euro and in terms of the taste I love you, Spain. Here in Turkey, we not only have a dollar food, but also an experience that goes with it. Oh, which one do you want, brother? Take pistachio, yes. Yeah. Take that. Oh, oh, oh. Take that, man. <laughs> I just, oh, uh, uh, oh, oh, I got oh. <laughs> oh. What is this? Oh, 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 my God. Here. oh, no. oh, 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 <laughs> there it goes. Oh. Ice cream. <laughs> I'm gonna get it this time. No? Okay. You're a magician, man. Woo! Oh. <laughs> you got me. Man, thank oh. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. Oh, oh. Thank you so much, man. You are welcome. And with the ice cream being absolutely delicious, with us going with the pistachio and lemon flavors here, we are starting to get to some crazy places here on this challenge. However, next, here in Bangkok, this is when we take things to an entirely new level. You see, most people don't know Bangkok as the city that never sleeps. However, here, they have something called midnight markets that literally go until five in the morning. <laughs> this place is electric, man. Like, it's nearly 2 a.m on a freaking random Tuesday. Like just looking down the street here, there's literally thousands of different vendors and with most of the food coming at just one dollar. Well, I don't even know what food to try at this point. <laughs> That's a big walk. <laughs> what is it? It's... Ah, okay. It's it's very good? Yeah? Okay, I'll, I'll take one, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, and honestly, I've never seen a dish like this before. Like, just take a look at this thing. Being a dish of fried noodles and gravy with, let me tell you, a lot, and I mean a lot of pork in it. And I just love that in this restaurant, like, you have the electronic music blaring, and then you have this, this like, crazy mural here. 
Like, what is this guy doing with his spatula? And the kid's screaming in the window. I gotta say, this, this is one incredible adventure. But next, in the 115th least expensive country of Malaysia, you can not only go to a restaurant, but you have a boatload of choices there. You see, the restaurant that we're at right now is called a mama, which serves a type of Indian Malay Chinese cuisine that typically is unique to whatever region you're in. And honestly, I haven't had this problem literally during this entire challenge, but... I'm having a bit of difficulty of what to choose. Like, there's literally over 50 different things that we could try. But since we're in Malaysia and they somehow have their national dish for under a dollar, I think we have to go with that. And oh my gosh, ladies and gentlemen, we just take a look at this beautiful food. You see, the dish in front of us is one that I believe is one of the most flavorful in the world. With having each and every ingredient just spaced out on the plate and then mixing it all together, completing the dish of, of course, the nasi lama. And I gotta say, the taste alone of nasi lamak is reason alone to come here to Malaysia. Like, holy crap, this is good. But next for the world's cheapest country of 2024, we're in Pakistan. Where I've been here in videos before, but never to the cheapest city in the country of Lahore. Making this the most affordable place in the entire world. Where going down the street, there's dozens of different street vendors, with them making everything 100% from scratch, and it being crazy cheap with things like steaks even coming at just 52 cents. And with us going with not one dish, but six. This is a huge breakfast, man. Oh my god. So we have chickpeas, we have potatoes, we have puri, and then we have halva. Halva. With what is this here? What is this is a fried form of food. How much for this breakfast? It will be a one dollar. That's a lot of food for one dollar. <laughs> Completing such an awesome journey. And it's a bit crazy, but what I'm thinking is if you guys comment do 25 more countries, and if we get say 2,500 comments on this video, I'll go to 25 countries and see what one dollar can get you there.